so what does life after awakening mean and 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 so many people have already achieved that experience but don't realize that they're there and be very careful that as spiritual people you don't get caught up in in the continuous search because you have these moments like a holy instant you have these moments these aha moments of complete and total bliss when you touch on that bliss you touch on that divine awareness that brings you completely out of your your body self takes you into a higher state of of realization and and then it, it's it's just a matter of time could be a couple of weeks it could be a month or two could be several months could be a year could be a few days and it and it subsides okay and then we start searching again and we think we've missed it we haven't found it okay yet each one of us has had some form of awareness experience at some level but it it just doesn't seem to stay so the important question is what is it that we think that awareness or enlightenment or liberation or god consciousness or christ consciousness will give us okay so what is it that we seek is it enlightenment is it liberation is it the reconnection with god to know god is it peace is it love okay is it human love or agape god's unconditional love is it still is it still associated to romantic love know that for a fact that behind everything we do is to escape suffering and to experience happiness you know and the the, the important question i ask is are we trying to bring heaven or truth to illusions and earth because that can't happen you cannot bring illusions you cannot bring heaven um, to earth you cannot bring truth to earth we have to we have to surrender earth and illusions and then truth makes itself known heaven makes itself known and the problem is we search with an expectation of what we will find so we see these videos of the guru on the mountain and they look so peaceful but i want to ask you um, and maybe you can just give me a wave of hands how many of you could imagine sitting in a retreat for the rest of your life you give up everything you've got right now. All contact with all family members, all of that. You just walk away from all of that. You go and sit in a retreat and you just sit and pray all day long for the rest of your life. Are you ready for that? Right, exactly. And that's why, okay, Philip is ready. Um, and if you are, then go. Then, then what's holding you back? Then don't let anything stop you. But what are you what are you expecting you're going to experience once you're there because once you're there you're going to be challenged with whatever challenges you're having now wherever you are when you go to a retreat whatever's whatever you're uncomfortable with whatever you're unused to not used to is, is going to surface there um, you're certainly not going to go into five-star accommodation so what are we expecting this to be and the important thing is so suffering is what really causes us in some way or another it's the we've had enough of suffering we've had enough of heartache and it's the suffering that finally causes us to turn to god or consciousness or the search for something beyond the liberation the freedom okay however how do we turn our attention to god unless we turn god into a circumstantial objective okay and the ego turns everything into either object okay or circumstance so when you think of god what do you think of god as now typically tradition will think of god as a being as a singular being and therefore a separate singular being so the the, the ego brain the mind struggles with something like god unless it has it attaches some form of experience to it circumstance or gives us an objectification so that's why of course in miracles jesus we can and religion very much you know is attached to the idea of a jesus a savior 
It's the objectification of the idea of God or becomes that circumstance, which is that, that moment of elation. So very difficult to focus on God unless you've objectified or circumstantially objectified it. Yet if God is not an object, because if God is everything and all there is, God is not an object. And therefore our efforts in finding solace in God fails again and again and again and again. And so does consciousness and so does awareness. Whatever path we follow, at some stage, it doesn't sustain us anymore. So before we, before we give up on this, what it's really doing is asking, or I recommend, that rather turn our attention inwards towards the source of our being. Because you're all aware of your beingness. I mean, if you close your eyes for a second, and just go into awareness, that awareness is the essence of your beingness. So turn inwards into the attention, you turn your attention inwards to the source of your being within us. And that's where you find the spirit of God flowing through you, throwing you. It's the, it's the life force that sustains you. Okay. And that energy from a course in miracles point of view, that spirit of God is called the Holy spirit. And although it's with you all the time, you only really become aware of it when you go completely still. And let me, let me give you an example of that. Right now, none of you are aware that you're breathing. Okay. But if I say to you, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, you become aware of your breathing. You become aware of your breath. Okay. It, your mind now, goes quiet and focuses on a singularity happens to be your breath. Take it beyond the breathing and it becomes aware of the awareness, the energy that flows through you. Okay. Your spirit. And since everything is in God, that spirit that you're aware of is God's Holy spirit. Holy spirit's not something outside us like the Holy spirit. It's your Holy spirit in God's Holy spirit. And thus we discover that the source of our being has never left us because you wouldn't be alive if it did. Okay. And people that fear death have this idea that when they take their last final breath, this energy will disappear and it won't because that energy is still the energy which sustains us. Okay. So the source of our being that has never left us is still with us is still that which sustains us. In stillness, God's Holy Spirit speaks to us. Okay? And speaks to us how? It speaks to us in that, that experience that the Bible talks of, 40, uh, Psalm 46 point, uh, 46.10, uh, be still and know. And when you're in complete stillness of self, in that awareness, the energy that you are, you come to that realization that is explained in the Bible and in the Course, I am that I am. Okay. Now there's no objectification there. I am that I am. It's not even taking you into a circumstantial objective. It's not even an experience of it. It's just, I am the re you, the realization that I am and spend enough time with that realization that I am. Okay. We started to realize that the, I am within us is experiencing the closeness with source with God. That's as close as you get. Okay. Now that, for want of a better word, when you become aware of the I am and not the singular I am this something, something, not the ego I, the simple I observation I am that I am. That realization is that reveals that that I am sustained by this holy energy, this Holy Spirit energy is is in God. That's as close as I get to God in physical form. Okay. Because everything is in God and therefore we must be in God too. Okay. Now, now I can stop here and say, what are you still searching for? If, if you're aware of this, if you're aware that you're in God, how much more is there to do? Okay. Because you now no longer in the idea of yourself as a separate finite being apart from God. 
because you're the energy that sustains that is always there therefore the infinite being as a part of god and that's really what is meant when you hear those wonderful sayings that say go within or go without because when you go within you you can reconnect with this energy that is fully aware of of that energy that sustains us now that's something to be quite excited about i don't know how that makes you feel if if it, it in any way is you're connecting with this right now because it is such an amazing realization so i am the awareness that i am and i'm the awareness that is aware that the i am experience is god so why does this feeling then not last okay why does it not last the minute i step out of this and i go to work Okay, well, I step out of it and I go do the dishes. Why do I step out of it? Well, actually, you don't step out of it. You simply just lose your connection with it consciously. Okay. And the reason you think you lose the connection is because you're seeing yourself, the minute you go into doing, you become a finite object again. Okay. And you cannot have a finite object inside infinite space. And therefore, God, the infinite being, cannot know us, you, as a finite being. So the minute you go into the individual idea of self, small self, as an identity, as a separate cut-off being from everyone else, you become a finite being. And that finite being wants to be known by God. God cannot know you. Okay, and you will not experience God while you're in the idea that you're a finite being. Is that making sense? Uh, are you still with me? Can you just wave if you are? Okay, cool. So, so yes, 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 we go. So, unless we surrender the notion of being separate finite beings, the realization that even the most, the person you dislike the most, okay. The person that really, that really, that presses your buttons. Okay, so in in South Africa, it would be Nkosazana Zuma presses my buttons right now, and maybe in the USA it could be Donald Trump or whoever else. Okay, so whoever, yeah, you know, whatever, whoever's pressing your buttons right now, you know, everybody's got someone, and generally, someone that's making policies and changing, or we think changing, changing the way that we're going to live. That person is you. Can you, can you accept that? And that, that person isn't happening to you and doing something against your will. That person is actually living out the collective consciousness and is just a representation of the collective consciousness of which you very much a part of, as long as you believe you're a separate being. So God cannot know us as individual finite beings. God is simply aware of his son asleep, dreaming up a dream, of hundreds of little finite beings, millions of little finite beings. So since God cannot know finite beings, he's created the Holy Spirit, the I am, okay? Created the Holy Spirit, spoken into the dream. I mean, we're explaining it in human terms. Spoken his spirit into the dream of his son, and that's the I am, which then makes us aware of the infinite consciousness of God. That means the connection of all of it. And as we become consciously aware of that, it gradually grows in our awareness, okay? Enough for us to realize that our separate finite was just a dream. So all of us now watching this video, everybody connecting on Zoom right now, realizes we're maybe all sitting at home, but our minds are connected through this talk, okay? So, so that finite self is already connected on the screen, seemingly on the screen. Our minds are connected. There's Chara and Machi Puchu. Yeah, I'm in South Africa, Vipka in Germany, Sophia in Greece, Krista in Pretoria, I think, you know, um, and so forth. And uh, Marielle Sira, I think she's in the States right now. Um, so we're, these seeming finite beings are connected in mind to a cause okay and we're and, and and we're creating this 
we're creating this connection. And as we connect with this, we gently return to the full infinite consciousness, which we are in God with God. Okay. And, and, and then I'll take you to and, and bring you to the attention of lesson 125. 